Clinton declined our interview request, so I sat down with her longtime associate and supporter, former White House counsel Lanny Davis. Davis made it clear he's not an official Clinton representative. Democrats are fond of saying this is a Republican witch hunt. However, that would have to include the New York Times, the FBI, Obama appointed inspectors general. Doesn't that poke holes in the idea that this is just a Republican controversy? Well, I make a distinction between the investigation by all these congressional committees, accountability review board that Ambassador Pickering and Admiral Mullen undertook. And Hillary Clinton said, she accepted their finding of systemic failure in the State Department. That's pretty harsh. She would agree that this was very serious. There was very serious uh, systemic failures. The distinction between that versus the Gowdy farce, which is all you can call it, and we can get into that, is a big distinction that we should be making. The Gowdy Committee versus everything else. The Gowdy Committee has, it says, turned up 50,000 pages of new documents, interviewed dozens of witness, no, witnesses nobody else has. They have brought to life the existence of Hillary Clinton's private server, which was previously unknown, and a lot of other information, and they haven't even released a report yet. How can you say that's all just a Republican farce? The committee is supposed to be about investigating the tragic deaths of four Americans involved in the Benghazi episode in horrible tragedy. So, yes, what you just said about Congressman Gowdy is what they claim, but you notice Benghazi, after 10 hours of questioning Sidney Blumenthal, was mentioned twice. Doesn't it make sense that the committee's focus would at least in part be on Hillary Clinton, especially if they discovered she had emails they never saw, especially since she was Secretary of State when all of this occurred? Why wouldn't she be at an epicenter? No, she should be on the issue of Benghazi. And if they think that they can do a better job than the House Intelligence Committee, the House Armed Services Committee, controlled by Republicans, then we've got to see what they're going to do differently. Hillary Clinton is appearing before the committee. Do you think President Obama should answer questions about Benghazi? I think he has answered questions within the White House, but as the head of the executive branch, no, I don't think he should go before Congress. There's something called the separation of powers. Administration officials have acknowledged to me and that mistakes were made, but they said there was no malice behind it. And yet, nobody really high up is part of making these decisions that I can see has been held accountable. In fact, if anything, a lot of them have been promoted. Why is that? Well, I think that's a fair point. I don't know why there should have been accountability. And at mid-level management, uh, a lot of good reporting, including yours, has identified failures of communication. But we know from the House Armed Services and Intelligence Committee, despite all of the accusations by the Republicans, there was no stand-down order. There was no uh, immediate ability to rescue those poor individuals, given the distance and the logistics. You are close to Hillary Clinton, although you're not speaking officially for her. Do you see a place for Bernie Sanders in a Hillary Clinton administration? <laughs> I love Bernie Sanders. I thought his performance at the debate and his graciousness about not engaging in the personal attacks uh, would qualify him to serve in a Hillary Clinton administration. Whether he'd want to leave the senator or not, I don't know, and be up to the future president to decide. But the answer personally is I really like Bernie Sanders, and I think he's a great leader. The post-debate bumps seem to go to both Clinton and Sanders.